Hey friends, this is Verda Luce Celestial from Divine Timing Coaching from the Cave and welcoming you to the Jupiter and Taurus video here. And we're going to discuss all 12 signs and how they're going to be affected by this really powerful transit. This is going to be a big transit around finances, around sensuality, around embodiment. And so let's look at the charts. Uh, we'll go through all the signs and we'll start with looking at just some of the big themes that Jupiter and Taurus will bring. One of them I want to mention is, you know, right out the gate, Jupiter and Taurus is is extremely strong in its energy because it's going to be conjunct the North Node, which is a symbol of increase and in our collective evolution. It's also called Rahu, which is the dragon's head. It's a very hungry type of energy that we're going to get right away. And this is really the, the last couple of weeks of May. And Part of this is that Mars is going to be moving into Leo by May 20th. And so we're going to have just at the very first degrees of Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius, the fixed signs, we're going to have this huge, huge, massive, it's it, it's massive, <laughs> with Jupiter, Mars, and Pluto in the sky. It's going to be uh, a big uh, T-square with them, but also the nodes are involved. And this is where we know that something hugely evolutionary is happening for a lot of us. Um, if you have planets at the end of the cardinal signs, which would be Aries, Libra, Cancer, and Capricorn. If you have planets at the beginning of Taurus, Scorpio, Leo, and Aquarius, there is a huge activation in this energy that is coming in with this big cross in the sky. It's a fixed cross. So whatever we're beginning now, again, end of May, especially around the new moon, which is going to be uh, the week, the, fir the first weekend here of, of Jupiter's move into Taurus, which is, you know, the, the, the 20th, 20th, 21st, 22nd. After this new moon, with this energy of building, we have these kinds of pillars of strength and empowerment that come in. And it's the fixed signs want to endure. They have resilience. They have stamina. And so this is, probably one of the biggest intention setting new moons of the year. Um, it's an energy that we want to consider for the long term, especially Jupiter on the North node. There's a huge potential of increase with this, of growth, of, of destiny unfolding, of our faith increasing, of opportunities arising for us, of inspiration unfolding, of empowerment happening. Um, if we are a teacher of some kind, this can be an incredible transit for us. It depends, again, on where Jupiter is in your chart, which you'll learn about in a moment. There is um, a surge of energy with this. Jupiter, Mars is, is almost like this crusading energy, especially with Pluto, which, you know, Pluto can bring wealth. The word actually means wealth. So this transit can bring a huge increase for a lot of us when it comes to, to wealth. Um, maybe if you've been building out a business, you want something to grow um, and you need a lot of energy behind it. This is, this is really, you know, this third and fourth week of May are the times to, to launch, to get really big with your energy, bold, um, publish something, broadcast something because, you know, the, the fuel of Mars, the activation and drive and passion of Mars going into the depths of, of power of Pluto, being able to resource others that may have more resources. Pluto represents, you know, those people who are more impactful and influential in the world. And, and, and when Jupiter squares Pluto, there's a potential for us by, uh, by proxy, by association um, to, to benefit from that. If we put in that Mars energy and, you know, push towards the, the goals that maybe we've had for a long time. And, and we want to make sure that the goals that we are setting and where we are putting that energy and that that desire nature is actually something that we want to grow for the long term. And this is also important to mention with Jupiter that we want to be careful to not overextend ourselves whenever Jupiter transits are happening, whatever uh, planet they're in and whatever sign they're in. And so um, be aware that the energy that you're putting in right now, it is something you want to have a lot of intention behind, um, a lot of um, energy you want to put towards those goals, and know that it's something that 
ideally like a pyramid we're building out like the architecture of something that we want to grow for many many years um we can look 12 years from now when we'd like something you know to be completed that we started now with jupiter returning again to taurus we could look to when the nodes are back in this position by opposition which would be nine years from now and so again we're talking about jupiter mars pluto and the nodes all together in this fixed cross um we can be uh very reactive with this as well we can be combative um you know fixed signs don't like to change so there could be a stubbornness um but um there can be a sense of getting into our ethics and our principles jupiter and um and and really um standing for that and uh taking courageous action towards achieving those goals and um maybe taking some some necessary risks uh, but but we want to take calculated risks because that's the nature of the fixed signs. Um, again, they're not uh, mutable. They're not changing all the time. They don't want a lot of change. Um, and, and so when we think of this kind of uh, power that we can access, we might also come into power struggles. Um, you know, Jupiter, Mars, Pluto, we can get defensive and irritable and, and quite combustible. And so we want to be careful to not be overreacted, especially as some hidden issues might come up to the surface to be processed, maybe where we felt like we didn't have much control or we didn't have much power um, and or we didn't have the resources. Right. And and suddenly they're in front of us. So we might get very competitive for them. Um, drive and ambition towards wealth and towards impact. Um, this is a big part of this transit out the gate with Jupiter and Taurus. Um, we may want to be thinking um, about what success really means to us and what we have to do maybe to let go of some things to uh, acquire that success. Um, this can be a very totalizing transformation that some of us might go through if we're, you know, let's say our sun or our moon or our ruling planet is hit by this Jupiter, Mars, Pluto node combination. This can be a complete pivot in our, our soul's journey. Um, and it could also be that we have a, a, a crisis and then a rebirth around faith in our life. Um, it could be a big purification and a shamanic initiation that many of us go through. Um, it's very expansive. It's very deep. And uh, there can be a lot of uh, revelation that comes from this, this process. Uh, but it's it's requiring, uh, you know, a drive into our souls and into how we connect and influence the world as a whole. And so, um, wow, it's just so strong out the beginning of this transit of Jupiter and Taurus. Um, you know, Jupiter and Taurus as a whole will likely slow us down. And this is something that uh, probably a lot of us are, are ready for after Jupiter and Aries the last 12 months where, and some Pisces in there where we've been very, you know, active. Maybe a lot of us have adventured or traveled after not doing that with COVID for uh, a couple of years. And the, the overall energy of Jupiter moving into Taurus is to get us more embodied, more into our, our five senses and the appreciation of the here and the now. This is something really essential with Jupiter and Taurus, and Taurus as a whole, which is gratitude. And, and gratitude also uh, often needs to savor, you know, what is in front of it and be become very present in the moment, right? Um, gratitude is not future-oriented, you know, that, that's very hungry and uh, a lot of desire there. And then you have, you know, the past, right, where we're in a lot of deep process. Well, Taurus is a sign that is about the now. And one of the expressions I think that, that could open up for a lot of us with Jupiter and Taurus is um, things like dance and, and all kinds of embodiment practices really growing. Um, contact dance being a very sensual dance um, that, you know, some people are doing blindfold contact. Some people are doing, um, there's, there's whole festivals dedicated to contact dance. There's a language there of the tactile, of the touch, which, you know, Taurus rules all the senses, but you think a lot around touch, you think a lot about hearing and sound. This could be an epic time for music. Uh, I'm going to be at a music conference in Nashville uh, all this next weekend. And um, 
there is a sense that that something really wants to grow around sound and music. Um, and so for musicians, it could, this could be a very positive transit for dancers as well. Um, and there, there's just the potential of, of, of new ways of embodying ourselves. This also can include a real growth in sensuality for a lot of us. If we have felt disembodied, maybe through COVID, or we haven't felt, um, you know, intimate with others in our body, we might find a lot of new ways of doing this. It doesn't have to be sexual. It can be sensual, right? It can be through different kinds of conscious touch. And that's why I think, you know, Tantra, intimate practices, sacred sexuality um, could really grow during this time. Also with Jupiter and Taurus, Taurus being a, a sign of the earth, you know, just, just being outside more and uh, hiking, um, you know, nature-based um, activities and sports, not, not really being in the gym, that might be a more like Jupiter Aries thing, but, but being a actually like in the mountains, uh, in the garden, um, you know, working out outside um, and feeling ourselves really connected to the life force of nature through, through the trees, right? and uh, being uh, more um, engaged with, uh, with the earth in, in a kind of a daily way. So for a lot of us that might be working in the garden, creating a garden if we don't have one. Horus is a sign of self-reliance. And, and so there's something really important when we're looking at resources. Am I, control of, am I in control of my own resources? And um, if not, what do I need to do to get that? Um, you know, and that means basic things like food and shelter. And um, this is a question around assets as well. And I, I think that a lot of us, um, maybe if we, we haven't paid attention to that so much, we're going to look really hard at things like, should I be buying a house? What does that look, time, look like as a long-term investment? Should I be looking at, it? I think with Taurus, you know, it's, it is a conservative sign. It wants to hold wealth and it's not, it's not into like risks. Like we don't think of like cryptocurrency as a very Taurus thing. And I don't know what will happen with crypto, but um, there is, um, you know, with everything else going on with the banking crisis, having a diverse portfolio with Jupiter and Taurus is something that a lot of us are going to be considering. And especially areas or assets that that aren't as risky one of those areas might be dividends they seem to be um the, a great long-term game and they compound over time you know so if you haven't researched into dividends especially uh etfs you might want to look into that because uh you know if you keep putting money in it keeps compounding and growing over time and you can even be putting money in that you're earning on your dividends. And so you're not actually spending more than your initial uh, investments. And, uh, and, and, you know, over 10 years, over 20 years, you can be earning quite a lot and, and even live off of it in, in a retirement, uh, depending on how you live. Um, there's also um, sort of real estate that you can invest in, which are called REITs, rates. And uh, there, there's sort of a similar process where if, you don't have the resources to invest in, uh, you know, a, a property. You might want to look into to to REITs because you can invest in companies that have many properties. And and this idea of like, how can I invest, but you know, not do it in a risky way, in a more calculated way, and in a more long term way, um, that is very Jupiter and Taurus. And and so really looking at our values and assessing them looking at slowing down um i wouldn't say this is a big like international travel transit i mean that's always happening but it, it can be a lot more like localized you know and simple things going to ecstatic dances could be really amazing um cacao ceremonies um you know more kind of simple embodied uh potlucks things like that where we're bringing food that we make this is very Jupiter Taurus to be. It's very grounded. It's very here. It's very now. There's an appreciation of the sensual, um, you know, things like chocolate and, you know, uh, nice wine or elixirs, uh, kombuchas and juns and things like that. Um, you know, there could be a lot of kind of great 
combinations with herbs and senses could be a great time for aromatherapy, people tuning into the power of sense or, um, you know, to use herbs in a way that is very inspired. And um, remember, Jupiter inspires us. So we're looking at how the different sensual elements of the earth, including food and, you know, again, music and sound and touch, how they can grow, how they can um, really uplift our spirits. And um, think about partner dance as well. That could be another realm. And, and so there's, I, I think this is like a more, um, it should be a f- kind of a fun transit for a lot of us in a way that is is very present. And so we want to remind ourselves to to stay present with with uh, this transit of Jupiter and Taurus and know that, that it's very strong at the very beginning. And then when we get into June, one of the best transits happens uh, of the year. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's really strong in the middle of June. And all month, you're going to feel Jupiter and Saturn in a sextile to each other. Sextile is a very supportive aspect, and it's um, where the elements support each other. So we're, we're talking about Taurus, Earth, Saturn's going to be in Pisces all year. And so this can help us, again, embody um, the psyche. Um, so this could be really good for like acting and psychodrama and uh, work like Family Constellation, IFS, um, again, using dance to to work with um, parts of our soul. And uh, this uh, also just is a good business transit in general. Like there could be a sense of, you know, maybe channeling an idea or a vision, Saturn and Pisces, and and Jupiter and Taurus bringing that into form. Um, but the two areas of our life where Jupiter and Saturn are will have a potential of expansion and growth and abundance and materialization, as well as, um, you know, actualization that the thing that Saturn brings is that kind of crystallization of uh what what Jupiter may be growing in that other area Saturn can help to bring uh, some real 3d form to that and um and so we want to look to again that longer term commitment uh, where Saturn is in our chart and Jupiter this year giving some some growth to that so we're kind of combining uh, the inspiration of Jupiter with the uh, manifestation of Saturn and the, and the hard work that Saturn is asking for, the discipline. Um, and, and, and this can be really flowing, right? It, it might not feel like it's overwhelming us, like, but we're like, okay, yeah, this is what has to be done. I'm going to do it. I'm going to love it. I'm going to embody it. And there's going to be a lot of growth with that. And so I want to look now at the, the various signs and see how you are all going to be affected by this so let's look at um starting here with aries and uh you're going to see that that jupiter is here in uh in taurus right in the second house of your chart and this could bring a lot more financial growth to your life a lot more resources to you um you want to look at your values i mean this is a taurus house and so this is an area where you can be earning more, especially through Jupiter things like teaching and, and um, inspiring others it could be uh, vlogging, blogging, getting a message that you want to promote out to the world. Um, this is a, a transit. You also have to be careful to spend too much money. Jupiter can bring growth uh, in terms of you acquiring a lot more resources, but it also could be um, spending too much. So be careful with that. Um, but uh, values, self-worth, um, if you've been too dependent on another's resources, this is a time to get into your own. And look at this Saturn in the 12th house. You may want to, maybe you earn resources from, from you know, retreats that you host, right? Um, or doing some deeper internal work, you know? The Saturn in the 12th, you might be like looking at, um, you know, a, a lot of working with the unconscious or the dream world or, you um, uh, the 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 place of the archetypes, you know, um, but this is a place where retreats and um, kind of a getting away from the world. It seems like in a way that helps inspire you to grow and expand your resources. So um, this is uh, for, for the Aries rising. And then if we look at Taurus rising, you know, Jupiter's in your first house. And uh, that's why this new moon uh, at the end of May here. Um, is is huge for you because it's in your first house so it's initiating you 
um, the North Node is here. And remember, we said with Jupiter in the North Node, there's this huge increase, there's this growth, there is this um, sense of whatever I'm building out, I want I want to see it um, expand for, you know, forever, really. And, uh, and when that's in your first house, you know, you become this Jupiter figure, you, you're standing out, you are an, uh, an emblem of, of, of faith and inspiration and meaning and, and philosophical, um, you know, insight into people's lives. And um, you may feel very called to travel. And, and sometimes that that isn't really calling for us rising. It's a, it's a fixed sign, right? It, like, it likes to be grounded. But maybe this is the year you want to take uh, some time for a spiritual pilgrimage. Typically, Jupiter in the first house wants a lot more um, freedom. Uh, and it wants to promote something to the world. And so, um, you know, look at that and, and look at the fact that Saturn's in your 11th house, giving you the potential of really grounding and cementing and crystallizing friendships and relationships that can help to really grow you um people that have the same goals and causes as you so i think june is is huge for you around the friendships the relationships in your life and um you know mercury's been in your first house for a while retrograde you know and who am i how do i represent myself am i standing up in terms of faith and growth uh as an as a symbol for that for others this is very uh very much something to be considering um at the end of may here and throughout this whole year uh until may 2024 where jupiter will then move uh into your second house uh sorry into yeah your second and then we look at um we look at gemini rising and one of the things is that uh, you know, Jupiter's in the 12th house. Mercury has been retrograde in the 12th house. The North Node has been in the 12th house for you, Gemini. And, and so it's been a lot more about internal growth. And this is a time where you can get very connected to spirit. Um, you may not feel as like outwardly motivated or excited about a lot of things um, out in the world. Like this is, you know, a lot of growth that comes through for instance, the study of things like dreams, mythology, spirituality. Um, this is a beautiful time to go on a retreat, uh, to do more meditation, to read more spiritual texts, and um, and and you know, take care of yourself, uh, especially on the level of mental health. You might be looking at certain addictions that you've had in your life, and uh, Jupiter can give you um, the ability to to get out of those. You know to to, to see that there's a def different way and to find, you know, usually a connection that we have with addiction is, is about some longing we have to reconnect with our source, with, with God, with spirit. And, and this can be a year where you can really do that and, and just allowing yourself to do that. Um, now, it's interesting because there's some connection in the way that you go into spirit or when you take retreat or you give of yourself in service because the 12th house can be like, working in uh, hospice or in prisons, right? Like volunteering or uh, even in, in schools and institutions. When you do that, there's some kind of potential for growth in your career. It's very interesting because Saturn's up in your 10th house. So there is a desire to be growing your career and have uh, ways of, 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 you know, manifesting more in the long term and, and showing up and being very responsible. Um, with Saturn in the in the tenth house, but there's something really growing your spirit right now that you must attend to, um, and it will impact your your career path. So just allowing that process, right? Being patient. Uh, this is your patience and a lot of internal uh, development. And so with uh, with Cancer rising, that means Jupiter's in the eleventh house, and this is. This is the place of Jupiter's joy. This is where Jupiter can rejoice, as the ancients said, because this is the house of who you know. And when Jupiter's there, it's like, wow, well, I know all the people who can expand and grow my influence in the world. And so we have this beautiful uh, potential with Jupiter in the uh, 11th house to be inspired through connections. Um it, it may it may bring some travel, but it definitely has a sense of, of my alliances being very important to me. You can earn more money for sure through who you know with this house. Um, again, remember Mercury's been here the last couple months. You know, there's a there's a retrograde that's been here. 
the North Node has been here. So there's been a lot of increase and a lot of contemplation about who's really in your circuit. And um, and I think this is probably some travel. Um, if not, maybe publishing a book or um, you know growing through those affiliations. Um, but the travel could come from Saturn being in the ninth house, you know, the area of foreign travel, going back to school, maybe. Maybe you find a new community that way. Um, academic development um, could be very important with this or a kind of pilgrimage for you. So this this should be a pretty pretty expansive transit for you, uh, Cancer Rising. And if we go into Leo, we'll see that Jupiter is now in the 10th house this year. And this is, this is one of the most important times of our life to grow our career. And um, again, if you, Leo Rising, if you are in front of people, which sometimes you know we tend to be, um, this could be a time where you really want to step up as a teacher, as a guide, um, you know, in, in inspire new possibilities for people. Um, you want to ask for a raise. Um, you want to just try to grow that career in every way that you can. And uh, especially as the eclipses have been here. Now, this may require that you, you, you have, you know, you have to move. There may be some relationship shifts going on. I call them relation shifts, um, you know, because the eclipses have been here as well in the areas of the home and career and um, also impacting, you know, re relationships. You do have Pluto, you know, now coming into your area of partnership. So we do think there can be some transformation around relationships and they're important for you to actually be able to grow yourself um, in your in your work, in your profession, in your calling, right? The, the 10th house is the area of, of vocation, which means to be called and you're you're really being called to step up and, and upgrade in a big way with this, this cycle right now. And there's been a lot of shift here. Uranus, of course, in this house as well. So there may have been some chaotic changes, but they're for your benefit, uh, especially this year as Jupiter transits uh, this area. And you can access the wealth and resources of, of others with Saturn in your eighth house, especially look at uh, June as a big time for um how you share investments with others and how that might grow your work in the world. And then if you look at Virgo rising, um, we're looking at, um, you know, all that Taurus energy, Jupiter there in the ninth house. This typically is a time where we are on a spiritual pilgrimage of some kind. Now, definitely we could be traveling around the world. We can go on a quest. You know, this is uh, more of a, a, a spiritual travel, not necessarily just, I'm going to go abroad, but um, it has meaning to it. It has purpose to it. We might want to work with a teacher. We might want to go on a, a you know, a more of a, it can be a retreat for sure, um, but it's really developing a, a cosmology, a sense of meaning, maybe somewhere that's called us for a long time, like India or Egypt or, um, you know, a, a place where we could, you know, maybe has a lot of temples and we could, we can study a lot um, and we work with a teacher or a lineage. And this could also be a, a very important year for getting out there in the world through publishing, uh, maybe a, a book, a novel, or your own um, nonfiction teaching of some kind. Um, going back to school, again, this is the realm of academia. Um, there could be something involving law as well. Uh, it would be to your benefit, uh, we think. Um, but definitely look at, look at, and this is for all the signs. Look at the last uh, cycle of Jupiter and Taurus, which would have been 2011 and 12. And this would be the time that um, you would have had Jupiter back in this uh, this ninth house. And, um, and, and your relationships are asking to be solidified and to get more grounded and pragmatic. And you're asking deeper questions on what I'm doing in my relationships. What are our contracts together? What's our commitments right and and that is affecting in in this way you know what you believe in this is the area where your beliefs should grow you know when jupiter is here and uh, you want to make sure that you are aligning your beliefs with the people in your life uh you may have to let go of some relationships where you don't have the same sort of basic uh you know philosophy and 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 groundingness in uh in what brings meaning to your life. And then if you look at Libra rising, for you Libras, um, this is this is a time where Jupiter is in your eighth house. A lot of planets have been in your eighth house. Um, so it's a very deep, deep year for you. Um, 
and it starts off really strong, right? With, with this grand square hitting your eighth house. It's a time to go into the shadow, into, into any of the, those dark resources inside of us and access the power that's there. It could be a great year for doing shamanic work, um, doing more psychological work, um, intense you know, rebirth experiences. And also it's a great year for taking out a loan um, and, and using the resources of others around you. It could be a partners, it could be a business partners, uh, an intimate partners. Um, you might inherit something, you, you know, um, but investments uh, can, can do quite well with Jupiter here. Um, and so you wanna make sure that you're um, taking care of your health with Saturn in the sixth house and, um, and that you're allowing yourself to go, yourself to go into the depths of your soul and to, um, to appreciate the power on the other side of this regenerative work that you're doing. Now, if we look at the next sign, this is Scorpio rising. This is important because this is a year where Jupiter's in your area of partnership. And this typically can be one of the best years for relationships in our life. We wanna feel like we're growing, we're inspired. Um, there's a lot of meaning and purpose behind our relationships. Um, we can find a lot of teachers with this cycle. Uh, we could travel with a partner. Uh, there's definitely been Mercury retrograde here. So you've been putting a lot of thought around relationship in your life. If you haven't been in a relationship, we would say be more social, go out. Um, Jupiter is, is bringing benefit and benevolence into the area of partnership for you. Um, so, you know, business-wise, personally, this is one of the best years for relationships and a lot of fun and play can happen uh, with this cycle for you. Now, Sagittarius rising, we have Jupiter in the sixth house. Mercury has been retrograde here, the north node here. And, you know, Sagittarius is not a sign that is all about its health usually, but this is the year where you want to get into a regular regimen. You want to be very healthy in uh, how you eat. Uh, you want to be, uh, maybe you're teaching more every day of your life. Um, you're maybe reading spiritual texts every day, which is very, you know, typical for Sagittarius rising, but we're talking about daily connection with spirit, the source, with, with that which grows your soul, Jupiter in the sixth house. You might want to get a pet this year. Um, you might want to give some more service to the planet. Um, and just be careful to not overwhelm yourself, overdo, overextend yourself. This is always a Jupiter challenge and you might just work too hard, Jupiter in your sixth house. Uh, so just remember that uh, during this transit and, and really take care of your health and um, make sure that you are disciplined uh, and, and you will grow a lot through discipline this year, which is not typically a Sagittarian thing, but this is the year where that can really grow for you. And now if you look at Capricorn rising, we're going to see that, um, you know, wow, a packed fifth house for Capricorn rising. And fifth house, you know, Jupiter, it, it tends to bring a lot of fun into our life, a lot of romance and play. This is the house of recreation. Um, and, and so it, it could bring more sexuality to our life, more fun kind of sexuality. It's more casual, whereas the eighth house is more intense, uh, you know, more more deep. This is, um, you know, going out more, um, you know, more play. Uh, more like festival kind of experience. But it's also a time this year where you want to be growing your creative process a lot. Um, so whatever that means for you, if it's dance, painting, uh, music, do it. Um, your child wants to play. That also means that you, if you have children, this could be a very expansive time for you around spending more time with them, having more fun with them, maybe vacations together. Um, Maybe they're growing in a lot of ways. If you uh, have never had a child and you want to have a child, this is one of the most fertile years, uh, especially right now with this new moon landing here. Um, really look at your relationship to your children, to the idea of having children, um, and to uh, the joy of your own creative process. And this would be um, a time when you know all, all of that can really grow for you. So enjoy, enjoy this uh, Capricorn rising. And, and with Aquarius, Jupiter in the fourth house, um, a lot of energy has been in the fourth house, 
maybe you've been moving or thinking of moving, um, there's a lot of good potential for you with this, a lot of positive energy if you do move with Jupiter in the fourth house. Uh, usually we move to somewhere that is sort of enlarging our spirit. Uh, we may even move to a, a spiritual community or a place that has a big view, right? Um, the house may grow. Um, we might be able to do more, um, some 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 good work with our family or see our family again. And um, there's some just uh, joy, you know, that, that comes from that. Um, so it isn't time to look at your roots. It, it, it could be a good time to go back to where you came from. Uh, Again, sometimes we travel, but um, it, it can be um, a sense of, you know, growing our spirit and uh, looking at, you know, that, yeah, I mean, Pluto's in your first house. This, this is going to be a probably a big year of transformation for you. And if, if all this energy has been in your fourth house, we think maybe we are moving. And, um, you know, the, 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 this can be a, a, an area of growth for us. Um, fixed signs again don't like to change a lot so really consider this move seriously and, and your resources your finances with Saturn in your um, second house you know don't overspend um, but make sure that if you are investing if you're buying a house that this is a really good long-term investment don't buy it during Mercury retrograde you know um, be sensitive to how you're resourcing um, and, and spending your resources so that you can um, make sure that you're growing in the long term. Uh, but, but you know, there is something in June that feels like it's about finances and it has something to do with resources and family. And lastly, we're going to look at Pisces rising. And Pisces is, uh, you know, ruled by Jupiter. So, so this is, I, I think, uh, a very uh, auspicious transit for you around the third house. The third house is the area of ideas and information. You want to look at how you are synthesizing what you're learning this year. And it could be a huge year for trainings and workshops, whether that's online or in person. Um, but you want to be doing that. You want to be taking short trips. Um, you may be very busy, uh, especially mentally. You may be working on a book. Um, you're more serious with Saturn in your first house. And so you want to get really committed to what you're learning and, and to, 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 to integrating that, being able to communicate that out to others in a way that feels really, um, you know, uh, nurturing, like mental uh, nourishment, right? And ideas that really grow you. So just uh, allowing yourself to be, um, you know, to be learning a lot, um, not overwhelm yourself with uh, too many ideas. Uh, that's why I say, I think it's a great time to write to work on a book, um, to do like the writing practice, like the artist way, Julia Cameron, um, communicate a lot, be a messenger. This is a, an important time for you um, to, to really, you know, get your ideas grounded and stand for them out in the world. And so um, this would be Jupiter in your third house. Again, lots of ideas have been flowing the last month, month or two with, with Mercury retrograde here, the North Node here. So what is Jupiter wanting you to expand and share out in the world and what you've been learning? That would be the Jupiter quest and question for you uh, at this time when, when Jupiter is in your, uh, in your third house. So enjoy that. Enjoy the ideas uh, spinning and, and, and see how you can constellate some meaning around that. Wow, it's been a journey. It's going to be a journey this year with Jupiter and Taurus but a journey of embodiment and sensuality and deeper presence. And so I really hope that this has been inspiring for you. Uh, I have some Jupiter and Taurus readings. If you'd like to focus on these areas of your chart deeper, um, I'm doing 30 minute sessions that I'll put a link to in uh, the comments below. Uh, if you're interested in human design, if you're interested in relocating, uh, I focus on locational astrology uh, and, and a lot of human design business coaching as well. So if you're interested in those areas, please uh, please reach out, connect with me. Um, and sorry about the light here. It's kind of crazy, but uh, just the, where I am today, uh, the hotel, Nashville. And, um, you know, all the best to you uh, as summer starts to come in and may Jupiter and Taurus grow you and expand you and keep you embodied in a way that feels really nurturing during the season ahead. All the best to you. 
and uh, keep keep staying tuned for more divine timing coaching. Namaste.